Hello? Okay, let's restart. Hello again. Uh, my name is Milan Jaroš. I work for IT for Innovations, Czech National Supercomputer Center at VSB Technical University of Ostrava. Today I would like to talk about our extension for rendering of massive scenes of Blender in Blender, of course. <laughs> First, I would like to uh, describe what does mean the massive scene for us. Then I would like to show uh, w very shortly how our rendering service works. Then I would like to describe two state-of-the-art systems for multi-GPU. And then I would like to show the Cycles 5 renderer, which is our extension for Cycles 5 on rendering on HPC systems. Then I would like to describe two methods support rendering massive scenes. Then I would like to show how it works on multi GPU nodes. And at the end, I would like to show the use case, how we all use it on our visualization lab. Let's start. What is massive scene for us? This is two examples for massive scene. First is Moana Island scene, which is the production scene. Several years ago, the Walt Disney released the Moana dataset for free for researchers, for developers, for testings. And for this scene, we developed the add-on. The second case is uh, loading and rendering the scientific data. In this case, you can see the rendering in cycles uh, where the data comes from open foam, which is the simulation alpha water. For the open foam, we develop two add-ons, Bicovice and Bivistel. Both add-ons are based on the Covice and Vistel, which was developed by our colleagues from HLRS Computer Center. Now I would like to show very shortly how works the importing Moana Island scene into Blender. We develop very small, very easily add-ons which support the loading Moana Island scene. Walt Disney really several scene description, for example, USD, PBRT, or JSON scene description. We use that JSON scene description with OBGA files, which contains geometry and PTX textures. Unfortunately, uh, Blender doesn't support PTX format, and we have to solve it. We developed the algorithm which converts PTX to OpenXR and UV systems. In this example, you can see how we import the palm dead. On the right side, you can see how looks the example of exported texture. And now you can see how looks the UV system exported from PTX. Now I would like to show how we allocate the resources for the rendering. Because I work for Supercomputing Center, we develop the HIPI add-on, which is very similar, for example, for Flamengo. You can use only one button for submitting job and send the blend file to the cluster. And after finish it, you can use the second button for download it. Using this button, you can utilize very easily the whole cluster. The PHP now support two modes, HP mode, where we use the, our HP middleware system, which was developed by our colleagues at IT for Innovations, or we can use the direct access mode, which is the wrapper for remote SSH command. Now I would like to show how looks our 
state-of-the-art multi-GPU system. We have 70 HGX A100. This cluster or this node contain each node contains eight GPUs. The uniqueness of this system lies and in interconnect. In this case, is and we switch and we switch from NVIDIA and NVLink. This is very fast interconnect with very high bandwidth and very low latency. In per rendering perspective, you can use all GPU me memories in one address space using the unified system. That means you can use over 300 gigabytes for rendering of scene. The second cluster which we have uh, is DGX2. It's same architecture, but it contains 17 GPUs card. And you can use over 500 gigabytes GPU memory together. Now I would like to show two modes of our extensions for rendering on HPC. On the left side, you can see how works the interactive remote rendering. The blender runs on the user computer and cycles via runs on the cluster. Blender communicates via TCP protocol with the cycles file and cycles file can run on several nodes and it communicates between each process using MPI or NCCL. On the right side, you can see the client-only mode. In this mode, we exported the binary file from the Blender and saved to the disk. Then Cycles file reads this data and continue with the rendering. Advantage of this mode is that you can run the preprocessing on the different machine, for example, with large memory. Now I would like to show two methods for rendering of massive scenes. There is two main methods for solving the low memory on the GPU. You can use the out-of-core method where it's usually uh, is using the CPU memory, the data are saved to CPU memory, or you can use the distributed or parallel rendering. In the case of distributed parallel rendering, you can use the data parallel rendering or image rendering. Our approach is in the second category, that's mean in image parallel rendering, which means the race remains the fixed on GPUs. How I said, we use the unified memory. In this case, uh, you can see the, how works the CUDA unified memory. F in the case of fully replicated data, in the unified memory perspective, the, this is example for one array and this one array occupies, occupies uh, four times more memory in the unified system. On the right side, you can see the example of our Barbara GPU node, uh, which contains four GPU, and each GPU has own color in this picture. If we can distribute the data, for example, if we use the continuous distribution. We can divide this array, which contains the several, for example, several data structures, for example, BVH nodes. We can divide this array to the large part, to the large chunks. In this example, to four, and each part we can save to different GPU. We, then that's mean we saved four times more memory. But we can divide this array to the smaller parts, smaller chunks, and we can distribute it, for example, in round-robin fashion. The, in this distribution, each 
small part is distributed over all GPUs. Of course, we can combine both methods. That means we, can, uh, we have the partial replicated and partial distributed array. In CUDA, we can use CUDA mem advice function for that and uh, with specific flags. In this case, for the replicated, we can use the set read mostly. And in the case of distributed chunk, we can use set preferred location and save to the specific GPU. Here are four scenes, four scenes, big scenes, large scenes, which we created for the developing and testing. First is Moina Island scene, and after importing, we get over 100. 60 gigabytes, and this scene has specific properties. That means it has a large geometry and large number of texture. On the right top side, you can see the museum scene, and this scene has large geometry and large textures. On the bottom, you can see the familiar pictures from the open movies from Blender. On the left, Agent 327, and on the right, the uh, Spring. And we a little bit increase the size from the several gigabytes to 160 gigabytes, and we can test it. Both scene has complex shaders. The Blender cycles contains over 40 data structures, these arrays, for the describing the scene, and the other structures, other arrays, are for the texture emis, images. In this table, you can see the four key data structures which we found that. In the case of Moana, you can see that BVH nodes, which contains uh, BVH3, ha this array has over a little bit over 80% from all accesses to this array. From all arrays. But it has only 8% size from whole scenes. In the case of Agent and Spring, you can see in the SVM, which is the uh, four shaders, array four shaders, you can see that has almost 20% accesses. We use this behavior for our next research. We developed two methods, basic distribution of entire data structures, and advanced distribution based on memory access pattern and statistic. Now I would like to show how works basic distribution of entire data structures. Here you can see the rendering time for Moana. And in this case, has Moana only 27 gigabytes because we have uh, we use the fully replicated, which is the green line. In the case of eight GPUs, which is the time rendering on the right. In the case of fully replicated, you can see over 100 milliseconds takes the rendering. But in this case, the scene occupies four times more memory in the unified system. If we use the round robin fashion, which is the example on the uh, top, and distribute it each and divide each array by distributing, uh, divide to small part and distribute it over all GPUs. The rendering time is, has uh, over 20, 200 milliseconds, which is the two times slower, but we save the eight times more memory. I think which is very nice. In this case, if we replicate it 
fully replicated four key structures, in this case VVH, triangles, vertices and shaders, we get very much better time. In this example, in eight GPUs, we are very close to the fully replicated scene. This is advantage the NVLink interconnect. How, use the, how works the second method? First, we distributed all GPUs, all uh, data structures to all GPUs using round robin fashion. Then we run only rendering for only one sample per pixel to measure the statistic. Then we download the statistic to CPU, run the our algorithms, which decide where chunks are, will be placed. Then we run the kudamem advice function to migrate the data and run the original unmodified path tracing kernel. Very shortly, this is looks the algorithm which decide where the chunk will be placed. The important things here, we don't care what is the type of data structure because we put all measurements, all statistics to one array, in this case of H array, sort them by the uh, number of accesses from the highest to the smaller, and we decide where chunk will be placed. How looks, what is the difference uh, between advanced and basic method? In this example, for MANA scene, you can see how looks, uh, what is different between basic and advanced. In the case of 5%, the replication ratio, Uh, in the basic case, we have only 20%, we cover only 20% of all accesses. But if we use the advanced method and using the statistic, if we use the 5% of replication ratio, we cover over 94% of all accesses to the arrays. Which is, in the end, was, uh, has very nice rendering time. This is some visualization example, how looks the distributed data, distributed array in this case, how looks the vertices, where are the placed. On the left, you can see fully distributed, where each color has a uh, GPU and you can see where data are placed in fully distributed method. On the right side, you can see the rendered image, and this rendered image uh, means the replication, that means it's, these parts are replicated and other with specific color are distributed. How looks the rendering time on the AGX multi-GPU system and DGX2 with 16 cards. Orange color has the, is the visualization of the rendering time for specific replication ratio. If we have the 0%, that means it's fully distributed, on the GGX2, we get over 500 milliseconds. If we replicate it, if we use the advanced method and replicate it 7%, we get very nice time, all around 200 milliseconds. That means the advanced method works very uh, nice on Six system with 16 GPUs. Now I would like to very shortly how works, how looks the scalability over multiple nodes. In this case, we test uh, the, this test was run on the 200 
over 200 uh, NVIDIA GPUs and over nodes we use the splitting samples. That's mean each node using and render it uh, only parts of samples. You can see very nice strong scalability. And at the end, uh, I would like to show how it works on our visualization lab. This is how it looks the visualization lab. It's not theater, it's my second office. <laughs> you can see how it looks the interactive remote volume rendering in 4K with 3D on, in our visualization lab, in cycles, of course. The Blender support uh, stereoscopy for a long time, basically for Borbench and EV. But for cycles, uh, it supports only offline rendering. Uh, we add two cycles file rendering of 3D images. That means it runs side by side. For example, four GPUs run the left, uh, render a left image and next four GPU on the one class, no, one node render, uh, render a right image. This is how looks the rendering in our visualization lab. For that, we create the VR CLIA client, which uses the quad buffer for OpenGL. And it's receive on the images and showing on the, in the cinema. We use it, the, we can use the GPU JPEG compression, which is very fast for NVIDIA GPUs. Now, uh, two last video. This is example how looks the interactive rendering in our visualization lab. It's, you can see the samples, how it render, and this is the example for 4K and 3D. And at the end, now we are developing the method for interactive visualization of scientific data. And this is example uh, of rendering, which we are able to render, uh, in this case, example, over 40 gigabytes VDBs in almost real time. Okay, thank you for your attention today. Uh, we have two minutes for question, if somebody has. Okay. I realize this is, not, this is not a part of the technology, but is it possible to use this kind of technology if you only have one GPU and a huge seed? Can you use, can you use the same technology to kind of uh, render big stuff on small hardware? Uh, yeah, we are working on the method which is able to run, for example, uh, on a one GPU or two GPU, and then it's similar algorithm and other say to CPU memory, which is the, in this case, the out of core methods. No. Is your add-on for uh, loading the Moana scene for your domain? Uh, again? Okay. The, uh, the add-on you developed to open the Moana scene, is it public domain? Is it the uh, yeah, it's our, it's on uh, our, but it's public. I can put it to GitHub if someone would like to be better. And uh, in this example, I use Blender 2.83, uh, which ha uh, I have for the latest Blender 3.3. And now I'm working on using the geometry nodes for that because I use it particle nodes which I have to use the mine own page for the instancing of each inst, uh, inst object because it has over 10 million instances and I use the hair and bake it to the right place. It's very small page, but with geometry nodes, we don't need any page for that. <laughs>